Jessica Denson, a former aide with the Trump 2016 presidential campaign, is making big waves that could have long-lasting and far-reaching implications. Denson first sued to invalidate the NDA that she signed with the Trump campaign in 2018, when she claimed to have been sexually harassed and discriminated against by a colleague. The campaign's response at the time of the alleged harassment was to subject her to a, quote, reign of terror. I was um, subjected to a reign of terror by the man who hired me, a man by the name of Camilo Sandoval, who is currently still at the Veterans Affairs uh, Department. Um, he could not stand that a woman who he had hired essentially to be a prop in his data department got a meaningful promotion and was demonstrating her value. And he launched an all-out assault on my character. He tried to steal my personal laptop. He tried to engage other staffers in th this theft and hacking of my devices. I went to the campaign thinking that they would support and protect me. And instead, the chief information officer, Jeff DeWitt, and the human resources director, Lucia Castellano, completely retaliated against me, took away all the work I was doing, banned me from Trump Tower, told people to keep me away from Donald Trump, and ultimately prevented me from being able to continue any kind of career or opportunity to serve in the administration. When told that her lawsuit against the campaign violated an NDA that she signed in 2017, she said, quote, these NDAs created an environment where people felt like they could act with impunity. Denson sought class action status for her case against the NDA she signed upon being hired to work for the 2016 Trump campaign. And as part of the settlement, the campaign has agreed to pay $450,000. Furthermore, the campaign has agreed to release 422 campaign staff members, contractors, and volunteers from substantially identical NDAs after a judge ruled that the language of the NDAs was too vague and unduly burdensome for the NDAs to be considered valid and enforceable. These, these NDAs say that someone who signed them will have a lifetime of allegiance to everything related to Trump. That if they dare to do anything but praise and be a sycophant for this president, that they, their very livelihood will be threatened. This is, this is un-American. It's unconstitutional. I would say that the document is a ludicrous document, but my case is proof that they are being used in real ways to punish people with stories that the American people need to know now more than ever and before it's too late. Of her lawsuit, Denson said, quote, Trump's illegal campaign NDAs are the centerpiece of his up is down authoritarian dream world, where silencers are hailed as champions of free speech, those who weaponize the justice system claim to be its victims, and the followers of would-be dictators shout freedom. Of course, this isn't the first time that Trump world has had to contend with their own NDAs. If you think back a few years, you might remember Omarosa Manigault. Omarosa met Trump when she was a contestant on The Apprentice. She maintained ties with him after the show, even working with him as his assistant and director of communications for the Office of Public Liaison when he first took office as the president in 2017. However, Omarosa didn't last the year. January, February, March, April, May, she was gone by December. The following year, Omarosa had published a tell-all book called Unhinged, discussing her time at the White House and her relationship with Trump prior to his presidency. When Trump sued Omarosa on the grounds that her book was in violation of an NDA that she had signed in 2016, the NDA was ruled to be too vague to be enforced. Trump was then on the hook for Omarosa's legal fees and was ordered to pay his former employee $1.3 million. Now, NDA served to further upset an already unbalanced power dynamic between the powerful and the beholden. For instance, when the Daily Beast reported on a claim made by Trump's late ex-wife Ivana Trump, a lawyer working for Trump told the Daily Beast, quote, I will come after your Daily Beast and everybody else that you possibly know. So I'm warning you, tread very effing lightly, because what I'm going to do to you is going to be so effing disgusting. I'm going to mess your life up for as long as you're on this freaking planet. You're going to have judgments against you, so much money you'll never know how to get out from underneath it. And then there's the issue of payoffs. When there's not a legal out for a crime, there's often a financial one. Money is power after all. 
When Manhattan District Attorney Cy Vance Jr. declined to charge Harvey Weinstein for sexual crimes because there was allegedly not enough evidence to do so, Weinstein's lawyer donated $10,000 to Vance just a few days later. NDAs and similar agreements are technically willfully entered into. No one technically makes anyone sign them and no one technically makes anyone take a job. Still, from what we know and have learned of the toxicity of workplace culture, not being forced to do something is not the same as not being threatened or coerced to do something. The power dynamic of an employer dangling a job and a salary over an employee's head has to be considered as well. It's very easy to look at someone and say, well, no one made you sign it, or well, why'd you get work for a guy like Trump in the first place? But those types of comments miss the point. You don't have to like or respect Jessica Denson to acknowledge that her lawsuit and its outcome has set a precedent that has long needed to be set, a precedent that prevents employers from taking unchecked advantage of their workers. For those criticizing her for working with the Trump administration, we don't know her story. Maybe she thought it would be a great professional or political opportunity. Maybe she was naive. Maybe she regrets it and has learned something from the experience or maybe not. We don't know, and for the sake of this story, it just doesn't matter. Even Amorosa, who admittedly is a hard person to root for, is worth rooting for in this particular instance. Too long have powerful people gotten away with things because they've deliberately silenced those that they have wronged. And once an employee has signed an NDA, the people in power have no incentive to behave appropriately or ethically. NDAs have a time and a place. Sometimes they're necessary in the interest of, say, protecting delicate or high security information. But when they're used because powerful people want to do whatever they want and not get in trouble for it, that's a problem. All right, that is it for me. If you got something out of this, please like and subscribe and be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you.